Good morning. Good morning. I just wanted to come on really quickly. And I wanted to discuss something. I am going to target this to the ladies. However, I think the gentlemen can benefit from this also. And it is this. Your standards will only be as high as your self-esteem. Your standards will only be as high as your self-love. And so sometimes I have to remind myself of that because I work with a lot of different people and they are in a lot of different stages of growth and development and healing. And I just have to continue to remind myself of that because I see people, men and women, making what I consider to be rookie mistakes. They're making a lot of mistakes. And one of the things that really grinds my gears is they are spending too much time and energy once they make the mistake. Like they're not able to quickly come out of it. Like, okay, I made a mistake. Let me quickly come out of this. Okay, this person is not who I thought. Or, you know, maybe this person is, you know, got some issues or whatever. But as soon as you assess that, as soon as you figure that out, you need to step away. You need to come away from it. Okay, you don't need to second guess yourself. You don't need to talk to all your friends and post online and ask everybody else what they think. Like you need to cut it off, step away and redirect your energy, redirect your energy to something positive, something healthy. Okay. But I'm seeing too many people make these rookie mistakes. And I believe it's because of this phrase, your standards are only as high as your self-esteem. They're only as high as your self-love. They're only as high as your self-worth. And so I see women, very specifically, I see women get involved in these situations with men and, you know, clearly the men that they're choosing and the things that they're tolerating or accepting, it is an indication of that woman's self-esteem, her self-worth, and her self-love or lack of it. Because, you know, what else could it be? Right. What else could it be that you would let a man that you don't know, a stranger on a dating app, a stranger on, on social media, you know, take up so much time, so much energy, so much effort, you know, just not talking about anything or leading with, hey, I want to come over and chill with you. I watched I, I looked at a text exchange the other day between a guy and a girl, and it was a long text exchange. And my first comment, at, you know, in the bottom was, what? <laughs> like, why is she going back and forth with this guy when he led with, you know, I don't I don't go out on dates initially. I like to chill. I like to come over and chill with a person and feel their vibe. What? <laughs> I'm sorry, huh? What? What? I don't know you. You're a stranger. Like, as soon as that comment was said, that would have been the end of the text exchange. That's it. That would have been the end of the text exchange right there. But, you know, because of something going on in her, she goes back and forth. She goes back and forth. She's trying to figure out what's going on, what's happening, why is he saying this? Who cares? Like, seriously, who cares? This is, again, once you have high standards, once you know what your worth is and your value and your time and your energy, once you know that, it is very easy to determine when someone is not in that realm. Very easy, very easy to say, oh, this person is not, you know, not worthy of any more of my time. I love myself so much. This person doesn't meet my standard. That's it. That's it. And it just blows my mind that, you know, people don't recognize that. And remember this, your standards and your boundaries 
are there to protect you. A lot of women get into dangerous situations because they lack boundaries and they have no standard. Your boundaries and standards are there to protect you. They're not there for you to be a bee. They're not there for you to, you know, to be difficult or turn people off. They're there to protect you. Don't ever forget that. That is why you have boundaries and standards. Because you need to protect yourself. You need to protect your time and your energy. We have a finite amount of time each day. We have a finite amount of energy. And she's wasting 10 precious minutes going back and forth with a man who actually said in the text exchange he would not take her out on a date. Like, that's it. It's over. <laughs> that's it. You got the, the minute or the 30 seconds that it took you to say that to me. That's all you got out of my life. You're not getting 10 or 15 minutes. You're not getting a phone call. You're not getting a FaceTime. You got 30 to 60 seconds to say, I don't take women out on dates. Oh, we're, it's done. <laughs> it's done. Like, that's where we need to get. And I guess, you know, as a dating coach, as a, as a, as a counselor and a relationship coach, it's my job to work with you on that. Like, that's, that's a big part of my job. So it gets frustrating to me when I'm working with people on developing this, developing the self-love, developing the self-worth, developing your standards, the self-esteem. It is critical. Self-love and the, the self-esteem is critical in building a healthy relationship. Because if you don't, if you are so desperate for attention and desperate for affirmation and desperate for validation, You'll accept it from anyone. You will accept it from anyone. And then this is what's so mind altering. You'll talk to these women and they'll tell you how high their self-esteem is, how high their self-worth is. What are you basing it on? Your weave? Are you basing it on your lashes? Are you basing it on your nails? Like, what are you basing it on? Because it's not based on any of that. It's not based on how you look. I have seen some of the most beautiful women I'm talking beautiful women. Destroy their body, right? They will uh, disfigure their body by getting all this weird surgery. That is not a person who has high self-esteem. That is not a person who is confident. That is not a person who has high self-worth and high standards. It's not. A woman who would get surgery to deform her body, to mutilate her body, it is, is not a high self-esteem person. So don't let that fool you that, oh, she has this big butt and these big boobs and this, you know, tiny waist. No, she quite the opposite. Women who do that to themselves are quite the opposite of that. They do not have high self-esteem. They are not confident in their skin. Women who wear someone else's hair and, and the, the nails and all the things. That is not a woman who's super confident. That quite the opposite. And all the makeup, I have to have all this on to feel good. No, throw your behind in a pool and, and get out and let's see how confident you feel. And I can assure you most of them were not, right? Most of them won't feel confident. So mm -mm. true confidence is in what God gave you. It's just working with what God gave you. You know, this is what God gave me. I'm going to work with it. I'm going to make it look the best I can. That's true confidence. But if you need all that stuff on, if you need all these surgeries, that's not true confidence. That's not true self-love and self-esteem. It's not. Sorry, but I'm not sorry. But yes, I'm, I'm beginning to to understand, and this is what I guess I want the men to understand, like really pay attention to who a woman chooses, who she interacts with, pay attention to that, pay attention to who she allows to treat her, how, you know, how she allows people to treat her, because she's telling you something about her self-esteem and her self-worth, 
And if she allows anyone to have access, if she allows anyone in her circle, anyone in her space, that's not good. That's not good. And don't get me wrong, you know, don't get me wrong, fellas. Y'all are going to, you know, you're going to smash if she lets you smash. But here's what you don't understand. You're taking on that energy, just like she's taking on your energy. You're taking on that low value, low self-esteem, low self-worth energy of that woman. The woman who has nothing to lose. I told my client this the other day, my male client. I said, do not, do not tie yourself to someone who has nothing to lose. Okay? That's the first thing you assess for. Is a, does a woman have her life together? Does she have something to lose? Her emotional regulation, her emotional stability. Please vet for that first and foremost because women will destroy your life. And a lot of women don't like when I say that, but it's the truth. And I'm not saying every woman, but women are different. Women are different. They are not, you know, the virtuous, loyal, loving women of, you know, the 60s, the 50s, the 40s, you know, that, that's gone. Women are different. And... You know, there's a lot of reasons why that is. I'm not going to get into all of them right here, but women are different. Women are very different than they were in the past as, as men are different. Right. And there's this chicken and egg uh, fight. There's this chicken and egg argument going back and forth. Like which one came first, which one came first. But the reality is like all of these changes they were, they've been slowly happening over time. So between men and women, all of these changes have been happening. And, you know, as a spiritual person, you know, I have to mention this. And that is all of this has been prophesied. Like all of this has been prophesied. We knew all of this would happen. And because every person who bleeds is, is valuable, every person who bleeds is fallen, is full of sin, right? So nobody's perfect anymore. That's the thing of the past. Um, you know, this is, this is how the world is. This is how things are going to go. But please, please do that self-work. Do that work. I have a friend right now going through, you know, a bad breakup and a parent passing away. And, you know, he's in that middle age, you know, having kind of that middle age, you know, that midlife crisis. And I said, yeah, I had one at 40. I had a midlife crisis at 40 where I was like, this is not the life for me. This is not the life I want. This isn't the life I deserve. And the good news is I woke up, you know, I woke up, I did some different things. I took radical responsibility and radical accountability for my life. That changed everything. When I started saying everything was my fault, like everything was up to me. Everything was for me to determine. Everything was for me to do something about. When I started doing that and I laid down victimhood for good, that's when my life completely changed. My life completely changed from just doing that one thing. Just doing that one thing. It's me. It's me. How is it me? How can I, what, what do I have the power over in this situation? How can I do things differently? How can I do things better? Once I started doing that, I took radical responsibility, radical accountability. It's me. What am I doing in this situation that, that's causing it to end up this way? Now, here's the thing I'm going to tell you about that. You have got to do some inner healing because a lot of people tie shame to being accountable. They tie shame to being responsible. That's why they run from it. Because if they are to admit their wrongs, if they are to admit the, the part of it that's their fault, they feel this immense shame. They feel bad. I'm a bad person. What's wrong with me? I don't go there. I don't ever go there. When I'm taking radical responsibility and radical accountability, mm -mm, I don't go there. I really don't. I don't feel like a bad person. I feel like I'm, I'm falling, you know, but God already told me that. I'm falling. I'm full of sin. And I'm going to make mistakes. I'm going to choose wrong. I'm going to say things. I'm going to do things. I, like, you should already know this. What is there to feel bad about? And some of y'all going to make the same mistake over and over and over and over and over. And that's where the shame comes from. Why do I keep doing this? Why do I keep picking these people? Why do I keep falling into these same things? Take radical responsibility and accountability. 
figure out what is your part. Stop pointing the finger out. Stop saying it's other people. It's these men. It's these women. Look at yourself. Point at yourself. Okay? That's it. Look at yourself and point at yourself. And figure it out. But if you keep saying it's everybody else, if you keep remaining a victim, if you keep saying there's nothing you can do, and I have several friends right now that are in that space, and I, I'm, I'm coming for them. I'm coming for their neck. Like, you're never going to get better. You're never going to get better blaming someone else. You're not. You're going to stay in this victim mindset that every, every, so everybody's doing something to them. That's, that's Why did someone so do this to me? And why is this happening to me? No, it's happening for you. It's happening for you. There's a lesson in it that you need to learn. And because you keep talking this way, you're not going to learn it. That's why. That's what's happening. So 40 years old, I wake up. I'm divorced. I have three young children. And I just made a decision. I made a decision. If it's going to be, it's up to me. And I'm going to control everything that's in my power to control. Now, that is not other people. And that is not always outside circumstances, right? I cannot control other people. I cannot control outside circumstances. But I can control me. I can control my mouth. I can control my thoughts. I can control my behaviors and my habits and my choices. That's what you can control, and you need to control the heck out of it. But this idea that, you know, people are doing something to me, that things are happening to me, that, oh, I can't do it, it's, it's all in how you respond. It's all in how you respond, and that is what you can control. I work on my thoughts daily. I work on my words daily. I am always saying it in such a way that's okay. I don't have it yet. I'm not there yet. I can't see it right now. Watch your words. Watch your thoughts. And watch your response. Do not react. Respond. Okay? I control how I respond to people. I control whether I get offended or not. I control who I choose to have access to me. That's the type of radical responsibility you need to have. But y'all acting like, oh, this guy, you know, fell into my DM or or he gave, you know, got my number and or he, you know, took me out and I got to deal with him. No, you don't. No, you don't. Just because a man wants you like that. That's called so. Just because a man want me is called so what? He will be vetted. He will be taken through the process like every man that's, that I've ever met. He'll be taken through the same process. And look, a lot of men, a lot of guy friends I have, they get mad because they keep saying, well, Anita, you know, uh, women break the rules for men they like and they make rules for men they don't like. Not me. <laughs> Not me. Every man is taken through the same process. I've been doing this for years. Every single man is put through the same process. I don't care if I'm feeling him. I don't care if I'm not feeling him. I don't care what he looked like. I don't care what he got. Every man is taken through the same process. I have a strategy. I have had it for a long time. I do not veer from it. And for the most part, it's kept me safe. For the most part, it's kept me out of any your know, relationship foolishness. I have the same process and I encourage women to do that as well. So nobody gets a pass. I don't care how fine he is. I don't care how tall he is, how good he smell. I don't care how much money he got. I don't care what he promising he going to do. He get put through the same vetting system as Joe Schmo the plumber. Everybody gets the same vetting system. Because again, you need to keep yourself safe. You need to protect yourself. So when men say to me, oh, if the woman, if she met the right man, she'd sleep with him on the first night, not me. I, I'm 56 and I haven't done it yet. <laughs> I haven't done it yet. I haven't gone home with no man that I, I went out on a date with one time and had sex with him. That has never happened. And I feel pretty safe in saying it ain't going to happen. Because again, 
that's not my standard. That is not my value. That is not the integrity that's in me. I don't sleep with men I just met. Okay? So that's what I mean by having a standard for yourself. If your if your self-esteem is low, you might do that because you're thinking sex is the way to hook a man. No, it's not, especially now. Especially now. So let me be honest with y'all. Back in 1986, when I graduated high school, sex might, and I mean might, itty bitty might, right? Itty bitty might, might have been a way to blow a man's mind and keep him coming back for more. And I'm saying itty bitty. That's in 1986. I might be able to sleep with a man and whip it on him so good that he's like, oh, dang, Anita's amazing. This much. In 2024? <laughs> 2024? Y'all think y'all gonna hook a man with some sex? When it's out here on every corner? When it's out here on every phone screen? When it's out here on every computer screen? When it's out here everywhere? Everywhere. Sex is everywhere. We are oversaturated as a society when it comes to sex. That man will take that free sex. I mean, lickety split. Like, thank you. <laughs> and you might not get a thank you. Let me tell you how bad it is in 2024. You might not even get an appreciative thank you for your sex. That man will take your sex, get up in the middle of the night, and leave you clean alone. You might not even get a thank you. You might not even get a spend the night. You might not even get a breakfast the next day. That's how bad it is. That's how bad it is. So if it's 2024, and you are a woman, and you actually believe that having sex with a man is going to keep him around, I say this respectfully. You a damn fool. You a damn fool. That is the last thing that's going to keep a man around in 2024. So guess what, y'all? That's why I ain't handling it out. That's why I ain't handing it out at all. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. I'll be darned. If you sleep with me and I can't even get a thank you, mm -mm, I'm good. That's some sex I don't need. And then, look, let's say insult to injury. A lot of y'all are having sex that ain't even that great. Like, the sex ain't even that great. And you getting your little feelings hurt over it. No. Keep your legs closed. Keep it to yourself. There's no return on that investment at all. Zero. You a fool. You a fool to be out here sleeping with a man and you can't get even get a thank you. You you crazy. So stop. Stop it. Mm -mm -mm. And y'all, like I said, some days I wake up and I'm like, how did we get here? What happened? What happened to us? How did we get here as a society? But here we are. So we in it. We in it. We got to figure it out. It's very sad to me. It's sad for my kids who are in their 20s. You know, I'm trying to navigate them through this, you know, dating and relationship landscape and talking to them all the time. I'm sure they get sick of it. But it's, it's bad. And then I tell a lot of my married couples or my couples in relationships, I say, look, you need to work this out. <laughs> like, I'm not trying to be funny. You need to work this out. You need to figure this out. Because you're thinking... You know, unless there's abuse, I keep trying to tell people, unless there's abuse in your relationship, you keep thinking, you know, I'm going to get rid of this person and I got all these options. Look at all these people on social media. Look at all these people in dating apps. 
Okay, you can play that game if you want. Yeah, please play that game. Please play that game. I got friends right now that's, that's trying to play that game, getting out of their relationship and finding out what's really out here and how traumatized people are. Don't play that game. Don't play that game. It's bad. It's real bad. So, do the work. Love yourself. Focus on yourself. And have relationships, right? It's not about being a lone wolf. I'm not a lone wolf. I have relationships. I have friendships. I have family. I've developed relationships with people and connections with people. That's what I want people to do more. Focus on the connection, right? Focus on the connection with people. Stop focusing on sex. Stop focusing on, you know, not being lonely. You know, that a lot, that's a lot of people. They just want to be with somebody to not be lonely or not be alone. You're focusing on the wrong thing. Focus on the connection. Focus on connecting to people. And actually, like, you know, showing people yourself and actually seeing them. That's what I want people to do. And when we can get back to that, like focusing on the connection, things may get a little better. But people are not focusing on the connection. They're not focusing on truly being seen or seeing another person. They're focused on, you know, their selfish desires. They're focused on sex. They're focused on, you know, quelling the loneliness. Yeah, that's, that's not good. You're just traumatizing other people. You're, you're traumatizing yourself and you're traumatizing other people. And you're a part of the problem. I told a gentleman the other day who's like, oh, you know, and, and he calls himself being all ethical, right? Oh, I tell women, you know, what it is and I can't give them anything real. I can't have a real relationship and this and that. And I tell them, I tell them. That it's just what it is. It's just companionate. It's just sex. It's just, and he thinks he's being ethical. And you know what I told him? You're a part of the problem. And I believe that. You're a part of the problem. And look, he immediately jumped into, you know, why are you judging me? Why are you judging me because I want something different? Or why are you judging? Nobody's judging you, but you are part of the problem. The casual sex folks, y'all are part of the problem. Y'all are part of the problem. Y'all are the ones that are driving down you know, the, co- the, the cost of sex, you're driving down, you know, relationships. Yeah, you're a part of the problem. I'm just going to say it. You are a big part of the problem. It's not a judgment. It's just an observation that if that's all you're doing, because here's the thing that people, again, you don't want to take responsibility or accountability. That type of behavior has consequences. You want to act like it doesn't? Oh, I tell them. I tell them what it is, you know, they can't say I tricked them. I didn't lie. It has consequences. Even if two people, let's be, let's be honest, two people come together and they consensually agree to be friends with benefits, right? And I've seen this happen. The woman knows what it is. The man knows what it is. They come together. They agree to be friends with benefits. They, they come together and have sex or hang out maybe once a week. And they do this over a period of months. They're just, you know, coming together once a week, you know, hanging out, having sex. I can guarantee you that eventually, especially if they're not actively dating other people or, you know, trying to figure out something else, one of those people is going to want more. One of those people is eventually going to want more. Like, okay, we're already in this. We're already doing this. Let's see if we can turn it into something real. And let's say the other person is like, hey, you know, I was ethical. I told you what it was. Like, why are you trying to, you know, why are you trying to make this into a real relationship? We had an agreement. And see, this is the part where, you know, I always tell people, yeah, this is how it's always going to end. It's always going to end this way. Because we as human beings were built for connection. And y'all keep talking about all these newfound relationship statuses, you know, situationships and friends with benefits and all this other crap and yet it doesn't matter what you call it because your evolutionary psychology 
your biology is going to kick in and it's made for connection. It's made for, oh, if I'm seeing this person pretty regularly over and over and I'm having sex with this person, like this is my person. Like that's what's going to happen eventually. That's going to happen in your mind. That's going to happen in your heart. That's, that's just going to happen because you were built to connect. You were built to have real, you know, sustainable type of relationships, not these relationships y'all were making up. And, you know, anything could happen in these relationships. Someone could get pregnant. Someone could catch something. You know, anything could happen. Or how about this? One person and your friends with benefits, they lose their job or they're going through something. Someone dies in their family. Then what? Oh, you're not as fun as you used to be. Like, what's going on? You actually have feelings. You actually have real emotions. And now they're affecting me. I've got to deal with them. Oh, shucks. That's not fun. That's what's going to happen. Like, life is going to happen. And then, let's go here. You are habitually setting up a system that is going to be hard to break. So, like, people in these friends with benefits and these situationships, like, you're, you're setting up a habit, and it is a habit, where if ever you did want more or you wanted to get married one day or have a family, it's like, I'm not used to being with this person every day. I'm not used to talking to this person every day. I'm not used to this person having wants and needs and, you know, actually expecting stuff of me. What is this? What are you talking about you want to talk? What are you talking about, like, you're having problems at your job or you have an illness or, you know, there's something going on in your life. What is this? Like, you don't even know how to deal with that. Because what you have practiced is friends with benefits. What you have practiced is a situationship. What you have practiced is something casual. So you can't even have anything real because the only thing you know how to do is do something casual. So it doesn't benefit anyone. And even the men, the men love to say how, oh, it doesn't affect us the same. Yes, it does. Yes, it does. Because we're all human beings. We're all spiritual beings. We're more spiritual beings than we are physical beings. And it's going to have the same effect on you. You're going to take on that woman's spirit. You're going to take on her stuff. And she's definitely going to take on yours. And, you know, that's how the soul tie is for. I've seen men in my office, I kid you not, men in my office, that they're under a soul tie. They cannot leave a woman alone. And I mean, she's crazy. She's done crazy stuff. She's been arrested for breaking into his place, and she's keyed his car, and she slashed his tires, and she's shown up at his job. She tried to get him fired. And they still will mess with her. They still go back and mess with her. They still go back and sleep with her. Now, what do you call that? What do you call that? And yet the men keep, oh, we different. We different. We don't get attached. It don't work that way with us. Then how do you explain that? How do you explain a man going back and sleeping with a woman that talked crap about your child, uh, you know, did all this crazy stuff to you? What? You a fool. You a fool for messing with her, but they do it. They do it. I've seen men go back with women that gave them STDs. I'm thinking, this, what? what? <laughs> like, I can't wrap my head around it. And you going to go back and sleep with her again. Like, she is showing you who she is, and it's dangerous. And here you are back sleeping with her again. Tried to get them fired. All this foolishness, and you write back. Oh, but men are different. Men, you know, men don't get attached. Men don't, y'all, y'all, y'all get the soul tie too. You fall under the soul tie too. I've seen men try to shake a woman for five years. Five years. It took five long years for him to break free from this woman, one of my clients. I kid you not. I can't make this up. So y'all keep acting like, oh, it's different for men. We don't get affected. Okay. <laughs> a lot of men suffer from scarcity mindset. That's a lot of reason why they go back. I mean, the soul tie is real, but a lot of y'all, it's the scarcity mindset. Well, I done went on this path before. 
this is a path I know. I'm just going to go back on this path. Why, why forge a new path when this path I've already been on? That's a lot of reason why y'all go back. If this is what I know. Like, this is what's familiar. Don't matter how crazy it is. Don't matter how ridiculous it is. You're going to go back. I can't make this up. So, y'all, I want you to know your standards and your boundaries will only be as good and as high as your self-esteem, as your self-worth, as your self-love. And it is an indication that you have work to do. So anytime someone, you know, comes into my office or I work with them online and they start off with this story, I think to myself, you got a lot of work. <laughs> like, And look, they come to me because they want me to like, you know, rip apart the other person. That's not going to happen. That's not going to happen. The first person I'm going to focus on is the person sitting in front of me. And I tell them that. You have a lot of work to do. And they're like, what? But this guy did this, and he said that, and he lied, and he cheated. You have a lot of work to do. That's the reality. And that's the reality a lot of women do not want to face. And the first thing you're going to do, so this is what you're going to do to deflect. That's the first thing you're going to do. You're going to try to deflect. Well, why are you victim shaming? Why am I the problem? He did this to me. He cheated. So that's the first thing you're going to do. Let me get Anita off of my neck. Let me come up with whatever spiritualized or clinical term. I can. He's a narcissist. He's a sociopath. He's gaslighting me. Let me come up with any term I can find to get Anita off my neck. I can't make this up. Anything to keep from taking full responsibility and accountability for what happened. And this is what I keep telling people. The sooner you do that, the sooner you swallow that pill down, that jagged little pill, and you get it down in you and let it do its work, the better you're going to be. The better things are going to be. You're going to start seeing things turn around. You're going to see things turn around. You're going to start healing. You're going to start growing. Your standards will come up. Your boundaries will come up. And, and who you attract and definitely who you entertain is going to change. There's certain men you're not even going to say, y'all, I can't make this up. Right now, right now, there are certain men that I just don't see. I just don't see. Like other women be talking about these men. I'm like, what? Where are these men? Like, what are you talking about? And I, I don't get it. They're like, oh, Anita, you don't get it. I really don't. Because these men that they're talking about on these date naps, you're right. Anita not on no date naps. Anita don't see them men. Anita don't see this craziness. Asking about your kids and when can they come over and are you going to cook dinner for them and lying and cheating and being married and all living with other women and trying to talk. I don't see those men. I do not see those men. Those men are not in my reality. Okay? It's lonely at the top. Okay? And I don't say that as a bad thing. When you level up, when you level up, you're going to have different experiences. The air is going to get thinner up here. Okay? You're not down there seeing all the nonsense. You're not down there seeing all the mess. You up here. And it ain't a whole lot of folks up here. Not a whole lot of people are leveling up. Not a whole lot of people are guarding their heart and guarding access to themselves. Not a whole lot of people have the standards that I have, have the boundaries that I have set. It's not a whole lot of people. And so, yeah, it's going to be few and far between. It's going to be few and far between. And I don't know if that's what people are afraid of or they're afraid of the, the loneliness that can come with this journey of leveling up. I don't know what it is. But you're going to keep getting what you're getting as long as that's your standard or you don't have no standard or you don't have no boundary. You're going to keep getting what you're getting. So at some point, you have to assess you. Stop making it about other people and what other people are doing to you. Can't nobody do nothing to me. <laughs> like, can I be honest? Can't nobody do nothing to me. You got one shot. You got one chance to pull a wool over Anita's eyes. And, and trust me. And the second I feel it coming down, I'm out. 
the second I feel you trying to cover my eyes, I'm good. I'm out. I'm done. This is what the old folks say. You fool me once, shame on you. You fool me twice, shame on me. We don't say these old folks sayings enough. But that is radical accountability and responsibility. You have to be responsible for what it is that you keep choosing or keep entertaining. Heal the loneliness. Heal the wounds. Heal the part of you that just has to be validated, has to be affirmed. You got to heal that. You got to you got to affirm yourself. You got to validate yourself. I was telling my good friend this morning when we were talking on the phone, I said, look, I said, you're in a dark place, but this is where God meets you. And look, he don't he don't get down with God like that. Right. He don't get down with the spirituality or the faith like that. And I said, well, you know, that's what I'm going to tell you. I ain't got nothing else. You keep talking about, oh, I don't need to rely on God or I don't need to rely on faith. I have myself. OK, now what? Now what? Because you're telling me that you ain't you ain't. You ain't good. <laughs> like You not good. Now what you going to do? He keeps saying, oh, I'm not good. I'm not good right now. You know, I'm in a dark place. Okay, but you saying you relying on you. That's what you keep telling me. I rely on me. I don't need to rely on God. I don't need to rely on nothing spiritual or Jesus. Okay, well, you ain't good. Now what you going to do? You not good right now. So... That's exactly what I tell people that are atheists or agnostic or don't have no faith, don't have no belief. I don't know what to tell you. All I got is Jesus. All I got is God. Okay, that's what's getting me up in the morning. That's the solid foundation in which I built my entire life. So I don't I don't got nothing else for you. But these people, oh, I just, it's all on me. I'm just going, no, I, I take radical accountability and responsibility but let me also share this. I co-create everything with God. Everything I got. Everything I do. Everything I'm about. I invite him into it and say, hey, is this something I should be doing? Is this for me? Show me who this person is. Show me show me this person's heart. Should I be going here? Should I avoid this? Should I buy that? I bring God into everything. Everything. I co-create everything with him. And guess what? Sometimes I be I be choosing on my own and then he, he come. Not him. Not him. That ain't it. One time he told me, I oh, mean, he's a good dude, but he's not ready for you. He told me that one time. Yeah, he's a good dude. He loves me. He wants to do the right thing, but he's not ready for you. So step away. Step away from him. Maybe. Maybe he'll get ready. Maybe he won't. But you, he's not ready for you. Step away from him. He's going to pull you back in the work that you have done. And that's what I do. I just step away. Like, okay, you, I mean, you said it. You said it. I, I, he, it, ain't, it ain't time. The timing is off or whatever. And I step away. I listen. So that's all I got. And, and these people out here, I don't know how y'all do it. If you don't have God, if you don't have a true relationship with God, if you don't have a belief in something higher than you, and I'm nipping it presence a, a power that's always with you i don't know how y'all live i really don't i don't know how y'all be living i don't know how y'all be living i really don't so I, I told him i said hey i'm gonna share with you what i share with everybody and you didn't heard it before and now you're gonna hear it again you're gonna hear it again at this low point in your life maybe you'll listen maybe you're at a point at a, a low point in your life where you'll actually listen but that's all i got all I got is God. Yesterday, today, and tomorrow, always the same. Because that's what he said. Well, everything is changing, and I don't feel stable, and nothing feels stable. Guess what's always safe? Guess what's always there? Guess what never changes? Guess what will always love you, no matter what you do, no matter how foolish you are, no matter what mistakes you make? Guess who will always love you and always have your back? So that's all I got. So, yeah, I, I just, you know, I'm going to keep sharing that. If you don't want it, if you're not ready for it, if you don't believe in it, okay. But that's that's all I got. <laughs> like, that's all I got. I can't I can't give you nothing else. Sometimes people want me to give them, so I don't got nothing else. That's what I got. I got Jesus, okay? So I want you to do the healing work. 
I want you to go in. You got to go in instead of looking out. Because, excuse me, what's outside of you, it will falter. And that's what he's, he kept saying. You know, all these things that I put my trust in or all these things that I thought were solid, I thought were good. You know, I've, I've, I've trusted and believed in all these things and they're faltering. Like they're letting me down or they're disappointing me. I said, yeah, that's everything we see, but God. Everything we see will pass away. Everything we see will hurt us. Everything we see is, as the Bible says, is, is passing away. But God, but God, that's why I'm all, that's my foundation. That's the firm foundation in which I get up on, I stand up on, I go to bed on, is God. So that's all I got. That's all I got. All right, I hope you all have a wonderful rest of your day. I am technically on a social media break, so you're going to see this video on YouTube because I will continue to post to YouTube. Uh, but I will not be on any of my social media platforms for about 30 to 60 days. I'm going to see how I feel after 30 days if I want to come back. Um, but I am estimating it may be a little longer. But I'm going to be out here in the world. I'm going to be enjoying my relationships, enjoying my friends and my family. I'm going to be enjoying my garden. I am going to be traveling. I'm going to be hanging out with friends and trying to meet and make new friends. Like that's what I'm on right now. That's what I'm on. I'm, that's what I'm about is just trying to create a life that I absolutely love, that I'm proud of, that I can feel good in. That's it. That's it. So if you're watching this on YouTube, and I know you are, um, please do me the biggest favor ever and subscribe to the channel and like this video. It helps with the algorithm. And if you're interested in doing work together, if you're interested in one-on-one -on -one coaching, uh, if you're in the state of Virginia, if you're interested in counseling, I can only offer counseling for the state that I'm licensed in, but go to the description box below. Everything you need is there. Uh, you can set up a coaching uh, call or a Zoom call through my pillar link. That's where everything is located. Um, all of the replays of the master classes that I've done. Uh, there's a, a course, a master class that's put under there as a course, but I'm going to be switching that out. But yes, everything is in my pillar link. So thank you so much. I appreciate you all. I love I love every single one of you. I love my followers and every one of you who watches my videos. I really appreciate it. It means a lot to me. Um, and you have the ability to tip. That's the other thing that everybody keeps telling me I don't talk enough about. So if you click those three dots on YouTube, you can leave a tip. You can leave a tip and, and show your gratitude, show your appreciation. I know I really appreciate it. So thank you so much, everyone who's watching. I hope you have a wonderful day. And as always, stay open to love.